What's good, YouTube? We're about to get into our first demo breakdown. We're going to be watching Kerrigan on Mirage at B-Site. And I want you guys to let me know in the comments if you want me to do these type of videos. Should I do it more where I watch it through and then kind of highlight rounds? Or do you want me to watch it through all the way, which is kind of what I do here? And just give my thought process of how to break down a demo because I have done it so much. So that could be helpful for some players. But I don't want to sit here and bore you. So I want to kind of find a good balance. So let me know in the comments how you guys think I should kind of run these videos. And if you guys enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to drop a like. But with that all out of the way, let's get right into the video. So Kerrigan as the B anchor gets decoy smoke, which means he'll probably be playing retake. Or if they come B, he's going to drop a smoke and try and fight with his team so they're running 3b right now so if the t's were to come b he would drop his smoke and play around it but it looks like liquid are going towards mid so right now kerrigan's not taking first contact look at brokey right if they start coming out apps brokey's gonna tuck and just try and multi-frag and kerrigan's gonna try and take the bait drop the smoke he bought the smoke so that he could play bait for brokey in bench but his team has all of mid right so he's staying towards b because it has to be a site and it doesn't matter he doesn't have to rotate a because rain is kind of playing retake on it anyway this is the thing in a lot of pro piss rounds too is they like to play a lot slower because there's not a ton of util right so you can just kind of throw a body somewhere and figure out where the cts are so this is where kerrigan sends his rotate over towards a because it's 35 seconds in the round if they're going to split a site he can just clear mid right now he knows there's a guy bottom con now they're probably going to try and split up towards a rain gets his kill Kerrigan whips a bit on a cross, but what he did there was good, right? So he went to spot mid early with 35, or he went to spot mid late with 35 seconds left. He saw that there was a guy bottom con, which means it's probably going to be A. That probably prompted Rain to get ready for them coming out A, and that got him two kills. And the reason why he clears mid that late is because with 35 seconds, you can really only split a site within the next 10 seconds. So if he doesn't see anyone in mid, then mid is clear. It's going to be a hard site hit. You can just put 2B2 towards A, and then you win the round. Faze end up picking up this one. So Kerrigan gets a molly. Notice how he doesn't have a nade. He doesn't even have like a rifle. He has an MP9, even though he knows the T's are going to buy this round because they did get bomb plant. The reason why he's getting util first is because as a B player, you need that molly for B. You need that smoke. You need that flash. And as the B anchor, because you're going to be playing retake anyway, especially even if you got off a moss, you're playing against Galils, you're probably only going to get one on execute. He's going to play retake on this round with MP9, or he's going to double B and try and like rat around from like van or default. Because again, MP9 really should be playing retake. All right, B pop comes in. He's going to end up ratting around towards default. Flash comes over. Nothing's out though. So this was just a beta rotate. Now FaZe have to worry about mid and A because this was a bait. It could be a repop to try and burn Kerrigan's util. So Kerrigan's aware of that. He's in a position now where he's not going to be throwing any util if the T's B pop. So he's playing like I was talking about where he's just he's just playing the multi-frag with MP9, play close angles. You're probably not going to hold against Galil's. So now that he made noise back site, he has to worry about a B lurk because the B lurk would have hurt him towards back site. So he's going back here. He just exposed his back to the second window, I think. Oh my God, Kerrigan. Pull out your gun. All right, smoke's on towards upper B. You have two towards B now. One guy kind of playing sandwich on A, so you can hold it. Yeah. So Kerrigan played that well. He smoked off apps. If he dies there, then he has a guy back site or like default van, van area. So the T's won't expect it. So he's kind of setting up Frozen to either get the trade or get both kills. So he starts off with the nade. He doesn't get a molly this round. And the reason why he doesn't really get a molly is because the T should be either full saving or almost completely broke, right? They have they have three Deegs, a P250, a decoy, and a Glock, right? So because they bought last round and they lost last round, Kerrigan doesn't really need to worry about a B rush stumping him because they shouldn't have util to like flash, smoke, molly, anything like that. So he should be able to just multi-frag on B. And this is kind of the percentage thing I talked about in previous videos, where if you know you have the highest percentage in a fight. Let's say it's like a versus Glock. You probably have like a 95% chance you're going to get that kill. Probably 60, 70% chance you're going to get that kill. And as an anchor, getting one or two is kind of good enough. You don't really want to only get one or two against Glocks. But that's why he's taking a deep B fight early is so that if they were going to try and pop on him with Glocks, he gets a long range fight. And now you have to fight a long range Glock. Percentage wise, you get that kill almost 100% of the time. So he's kind of getting ahead of the execute if they were to pop B here. But now he's falls back and he saw he saw a deagle going for a pick at b so now he knows that they're kind of just going to be walking around the map with deeks trying to find something this isn't going to be a really structured round so now he can kind of anchor b like it's a pug All right so he ends up getting the first nothing else again he can just anchor it like it's a pug this guy was just trying to find a pick at b he realized that within the first like five seconds of the round and now look at the setup so they're double towards b there's a guy in con spawning mid but he's probably going to shift towards jungle or shift towards a i doubt he stays in mid just because his a player is playing in sight so if they pop powers or something that'd be dangerous so Berkey's going to go for a mid clear here and then act if he clears mid here and doesn't see anything he would have gone a this is why i kind of don't like what he just did because he's solo in connector he has a guy solo on a if they were to have like a guy walk out palace with d maybe catch rain off guard on a and brokey does this and goes one for one on mid there's a decent chance you lose that round it's a 2v2 so brokey actually kind of griefed here 
if he was going to clear mid and then go back towards A, I think it's okay. But this late into the round, it's tough. So Kerrigan now holds window boost, which is good. Rain ended up getting the last kill, and they ended up winning that round. So now Liquid take a timeout. They've lost three T rounds now, which is 10 to 5. This is map 3, by the way. So they kind of need to win this round to be able to have a fighting chance in this game. They won't have enough like leeway in rounds if they go down 11-5, and they have to go on a save. So their goal here, so they either need to win the round here or they need to get a bomb plant. Because if they get a bomb plant, then they get 4,200. So they can still buy into the next round. But if they lose this round and don't get a bomb plant, that almost secures the game for phase. Kerrigan's probably aware of this, though. I don't think it'll really change anything he's doing at B. You don't normally change what you do as a B anchor. But this is what I talked about in the Mirage video, right? So they're playing one window, three towards A. And now Kerrigan has the B player is just leaving B open completely. Some teams will boost in Valley and try and catch off this angle because this is pretty common for cat player to play. So some teams will boost right here and try and pick them off. But you don't generally have to worry about that. That's a pretty low percent that that happens. And again, if they're going to go out B, they're going to throw a ton of util. They're probably not going to do a lurk play here. So Kerrigan's kind of safe to play off cat here and not really hold apps. So Rops ends up getting a kill on A, which will tell the T's that they're playing off of mid, that Faze are playing off of mid. So Kerrigan goes ahead and smokes Cat here to try and deny any T's that were in mid that we're going to end up speeding up mid because they know that Faze are stacked towards A. And that's kind of the goal of this setup is that you're playing on mid a little bit, you're playing on A a little bit, and you're just gambling that they don't pop B, which in this round it ends up working out. So Kerrigan ends up shifting back towards B site. You do have man advantage, so even if Kerrigan gets one, maybe two this round, this round is pretty much secured. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's doing. So he's just planning to get one or two kills here. So if they molly van, he can kind of just shoot them while they're jumping out the window. There comes the van molly. Now he has to worry about cat. Ends up getting one. Has to worry about the window. Almost gets the second. But him doing that, him right there getting his one kill as a B player still ensures that FaZe has the man advantage and they have a rotate on towards B. And just like the other rounds, Kerrigan was baiting for Brokey. Brokey gets one. I don't know if Brokey will double here just because there's a guy on balcony. So this is kind of a tough fight, but it's Brokey, so I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, his teammate from Cat supports. And that's pretty much just the round secured. And that's your job as a site anchor is if you have man advantage, you want to ensure that your team will be going into a retake with man advantage. And you'll either do that by playing to get one or two or playing retake. So Kadian ends up saving the op here. So Kerrigan got dropped, now he's a full buy. And they are just going to start with a 2 on 2 setup this round, but they're not actually playing on mid. So see how there's two A players in A site right now? This means that the cat player has to make a lot of noise on cat, and the window player has to make a lot of noise in mid to try and make it look like the CTs are playing on mid for the Ts. So the Ts will end up going out A or popping B. All right, so Frozen was being kind of noisy on cat. He flashed, he did everything like that. It prompted the Ts to go out towards A. Now Twist is in mid lurking for a kill. Kerrigan's over rotating towards jungle, but they have a guy push top mid only. So Kerrigan dying there is kind of bad because you have a guy push top mid, your guy CT just got a kill, and it seems like the reason why Kerrigan peeked out is because the CT player got a kill. There's two reasons why he'd do that. It's either one, he thinks that the Ts are going to try and react towards CT and look and look towards his teammate in CT, so he might be able to catch someone off guard, or he was going to try and pressure to make it look like the cat player was the one that rotated jungle so that Frozen could get a good flank, but that doesn't really compute, especially when you're in a 3v3 with a flank, so kind of griefed, but it was a calculated grief. So Kerrigan as the anchor is getting MP9 smoke, and this is something you guys as anchors need to really understand, is that as an anchor, you need a smoke. You need a smoke. You need a smoke. It doesn't matter. You don't want to get a FAMAS and no util. You don't want to get any gun and really no util as an anchor. You'll see some pro anchors when they are anchoring a site and they have low money. They'll get like a 5-7 in full util because they can't afford an MP9 in full util. It's very dependent on the site that you're anchoring. But at B especially, you need a smoke to either play around or slow down the T's execute so you can hold on to market, hold on to cat, something like that. But you want to slow down the T's execute or you want to smoke to rat around, especially when you're on MP9. So that's what Kerrigan is doing here. Now he's solo towards B this round. The rest of his team is either on mid or on A. So I wouldn't be surprised if he just jump spots and plays to run away. Which is exactly what he's doing. Got the opera rotated towards B. They have two on B now. He throws the smoke. He's going to be playing to rat around it because he has the opera on cat. So he doesn't want to just leave his cat opera out to dry. He picks up the first kill. Opera gets the second one. Now he just has to play around the smoke and try and live for the rotates. So see how he's just living. He's not really fighting anything. He's not exposing himself to a ton of angles. He's just holding the smoke, playing very, very smart. And now that the T's have gone quiet, he kind of has to figure out, did anyone drop Van? Did anyone not drop Van? See how I, he's still he's still kind of worried about Van. He's playing very scared right now, but it makes sense because he's 4v2, so he doesn't want to get singled out. Again, he's still worried about Van, so he's going to walk up, check apps. Now he has to clear Van. He knows the last guy's towards top mid, so this is time for him to take app space, pick up a gun. Brokey ends up getting the kill on Cat, and that's another round for FaZe. 
So this is when Faye start going on a little bit of a losing streak, and I think it's probably because Liquid either started taking fast mid or just doing hard A executes based on what the CTs are doing on mid. And the reason why I think that is because their game plan so far has been to hit B, split B, pop B, do all these things at B. Kerrigan's playing it really well, and Faze are playing their rotates really well. But when they do play their rotates, they're leaving a gap, which is how Mirage works. When they rotate one towards B, so they have two towards B, they have three towards A, mid is a gap. When they're playing, you know, three towards mid, two on B, or maybe one on B and one up cat, the gap is over towards A. So I think what Liquid are going to end up doing is probably slow it down. They slower T side, try and figure out Phaser's rotates, or they're just going to do hard A executes based off of what Phaser are doing on mid. And exactly like I was saying, Liquid are going for an A execute right now. I did not watch this demo before this. I am just speaking facts right now. So again, look at Phase. They're doing the same 4-1 thing I was talking about. They have three towards mid. They have one towards A. But again, notice how Kerrigan, he's kind of jumping on balcony is a little egregious here as a solo B player. But he might recognize that the Liquid's game plan so far has been to hit B and it hasn't been working. So in his head as a caller, they're probably not going to keep coming B. And if they do, let me switch up how I'm playing it. So he's playing a little more aggressive here. He instantly smokes app. So now he has to either play on balcony or jump spot and play to just completely run away because he doesn't have that smoke to hold sight now. That's a cool little thing that you guys can do in your games. You just fake the drop. So right now they're 4v5. Their anchor didn't really do their job. Kerrigan has a flash for CT. He should be able to pick up one or two kills off of this, but Liquid actually swing at the same time as him throwing his flash, so that ends up getting him killed. And now Rops is in a position, this is just unwinnable, he has to save. So again, Liquid are going for another A execute. I'm, I'm, I promise I didn't watch this match live or watch this demo before I recorded this video. They're just doing normal things that make sense. Playing percentages, reading how FaZe have been playing their CT side. But FaZe have also read it, so they have three over towards here. They should still lose this round, however, because they do have worse guns. Even if they do have three towards A, it's still going to be hard to hold a full execute versus full bot T's. But the hold that they had on site ended up getting them into a 2v2. So now it's just up to Kerrigan and I believe it's Rops. So notice how they're not really moving here. They're not really over peeking. Kerrigan's just spotting CT cross so that if someone does cross towards CT, he can kind of play bait for Rops. Rops can maybe walk up, try and find a cheese kill. But while this is going on, Liquid are walking up cat. And now that Kerrigan has picked up this gun, they can actually save this round and it's fairly okay. They have two guns and even if they full save the next round, maybe Kerrigan can buy like Kevlar or something and they still have an okay chance. This is a really sticky scenario that they've just gotten themselves into. So they split up so that Kerrigan could get a gun, but they knew it was B so Rops rotated it early. He did pick up the kill in market, but now it's a 2v1 and one of your players is market, one of your players is cat. So they're going to have to play this pretty slow and calculated. They don't have kits, so they're going to have to retake fairly quickly. This is the perfect scenario to be in as Cadian because you should know that they don't have a kit. Rops did save this M4, so you don't really know if he has a kit saved from the last round. And he might not know it yet, but going bench with an op in the scenario is possibly the best place you could be. So Rops gets out of market because he doesn't want to get insta-traded. Kerrigan comes up cat with the AK, and look how they're playing it, right? They're, they're kind of playing passive. They don't want to get singled out. They want to make sure that by the time they die that each other are close to trade. Kaden ends up picking up Kerrigan on cat and finishes Rops in market. And again, them losing that 2v1 is not really because they played it wrong. They're just in such bad spots that percentage-wise they should be losing that round even if they do everything correctly. So this round they're going to opt for the full save, and the reason why they're full saving here is because they have enough rounds as cushion to be able to push them to like maybe two or three more full buys on their CT side. And with four rounds left in regulation, this makes sense. I ended up skipping the full save because as pretty much every full save goes, they got one kill and the rest of them died. Nothing super special. Now, this is an interesting buy from Kerrigan. He doesn't have a molly. And the reason why I don't think he'd be getting a molly here is because Liquid haven't really been rushing B. And generally as the B player, you molly up or B at the very start of the round. So he's kind of just praying right now that Liquid don't do a B rush or an instant B pop. And even if they do do a B pop, he could just drop an 8 on apps and do a decent amount of damage. A molly wouldn't really do too much as a solo B anchor. If they do a B pop, they'll just smoke it and come out on you anyway. So he's kind of just playing to play around a smoke here, maybe do damage when they come out with the nade. And if he does play on site when they end up popping B, if they do end up going towards B, he would probably just try and play for one or two. So he uses his flash towards mid, he uses the nade towards upper B, now he has one smoke, okay? He has no other util, his B player rotated in, so that means that now he could play for sight. But from Liquid's perspective, they know that the CT's just cleared mid, they heard all the flashes towards mid, I'm assuming Box got mollied. So this will prompt Liquid to go out A now, and this is the mind game in Pro CS. Every time FaZe has fought for mid, Liquid have ended up popping towards B. That's why Liquid, the last two rounds, have just done hard A execute, hard A execute. So Kerrigan's not really expecting them to go A again, the same way that they switched from B to A when B wasn't working. He thinks that they're gonna switch from A to B when A isn't working, but Liquid just say, no, 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 we're gonna keep going A, and that's what's gonna end up happening here. I do like that 
Frozen has rotated back towards spawn, so now there's a guy playing towards CT, they have a guy towards con, so now they're just playing on retake, but they have enough numbers to be able to contain the T's inside A site. Kerrigan gets his rotate over towards jungle, they threw right side smoke, so they threw stair and jungle, so Kerrigan can safely spam, he can safely rotate to jungle. So Kerrigan just heard someone run into stairs. This is a kind of weird position because you don't really want to go for this retake. They just re jungle. They just took towards stair control. You're not really going to win this in a 4v5. So unless Kerrigan gets this kill right here, FaZe will probably save this round. So this still opens up FaZe to go for the retake, but it's still low percentage. That's why his entire team is already saving. Kerrigan was kind of just trying to see if he could get another kill or get out, and as he was in transition, he got picked. So FaZe go for kind of a half invest here. They have some save guns from last round. The people who had to buy have MP9s, and they're just going to do some cheesy little boost on B. Because they have low util, they have bad guns, they're just going to try and do some little gimmicky stuff to try and pick off the T's if they do end up executing towards B. And it looks like Liquid are just forcing it up Cat. They do have an underpass flank. But FaZe have four towards B right here, so they should be winning this round, even if they do have worse guns. They have Frozen boosted default, right? So right here, Brokey took contact on back site. Frozen took contact on boosted default. That's why Kerrigan starts trying to get a fight immediately, because from the T's perspective, they already killed two players over towards B. I think they killed an underpass guy, and they killed another guy towards B. And there's still two players on B, so they should be thinking there's no way that they have three B still if we already killed two people towards B. So Kerrigan is trying to abuse that initial thought that Liquid is having once they kill the two B players and spot out another two players on B to try and pick off a T who's hyper-focused on those two positions on the B players. Which is what ends up happening. So he takes contact first. It gets Kadian to end up realizing, oh my god, they're all three B, I need to run away. Frozen chases him down, and this is how they end up winning the round. Kerrigan ends up going towards Van, he picks up that kill, and again, he's not really too worried in the scenario, he has, still has two people towards B, I think he knows that bomb is down on Cat, but if anyone was to fight him on this angle in apps, they'd have to be exposed to the first window, so it should be a quick trade from Frozen. Now he ends up upgrading his gun, he gets into apps, if he doesn't see anyone in apps, he kind of knows that this has to be a lurk, also it is Yekendar who ends up usually being the lurk of the entry, if he's not going to be first, he's probably going to be last. He smokes off Cat, he kind of denies his entry towards Cat. And again, Liquid saw that there are three towards B, so Kerrigan's going to make it look scarier than it actually is. He's going to go ahead and smoke off Get Right, and his teammates are going to rotate towards A because they should know that Yekendar knows that they all were towards B. So now they're just doubling towards A, and they're going to end up picking up this kill, and this should be the end of the game right here. Smoke goes down. They don't really have to force it because they have two players towards jungle. They hear him running towards site. The... The M4 starts spamming, now Yekendar starts spamming back. Kerrigan's up cast so he can kind of shoot towards Yekendar. Yek Yekendar's just going to try and isolate a 1v1 here, but because the numbers are overwhelming, he should just be losing this. Frozen ends up dying, now Kerrigan and Brokey are kind of in a weird scenario, but they can just play top and bottom and con. Right, so Kerrigan's kind of underneath him. Brokey's bottom stair, they hear the plant, Brokey starts running up. This is a very easy way to lose this 2v1. I don't really like what Brokey did here. Even if you are as confident as Brokey in these scenarios, that is still a very, very easy way to grief this round. Yekendar could have easily peaked right side default and isolated him, and now you went from a 3v1 to a 1v1. So what Kerrigan kind of showed us in that demo is how you want to play B anchor solo, how you want to shift your rotate up cat every now and then, how you want to bait for your B player as the anchor. You do want to be the one who's taking contact on your rotate, because your rotates are going to be the ones who are in the frag positions. But yeah, I hope I gave some insight as to how Kerrigan thinks about about the B site. I've been watching his demos for a few years now. I'm glazing him really hard, I know, but he is probably the most experienced B anchor in the pro scene right now. So if you want to learn anything about playing B, go ahead and watch Kerrigan. A lot of teams anti-strat, so you don't want to take everything one for one, but hopefully this also offers some insight as to how you should watch a demo. You want to find the reasons why. If he does something cool, that's awesome. You can take it into your game, but if you don't know why or the reasons why he's doing it, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, that will be it for the video. I'm going to leave 10 free refrag codes down below if you want to go ahead and use that. It's the maps I used to practice on. I do also offer coaching on my Medify if you want to go check that out, and I stream Monday through Friday, 1 to 5 p.m. EST if you want to come ask me some questions there. Yeah, thanks for watching.